One of the most horrifying thoughts for people is reaching the end of their life when it's all over. But what happens if you get to that point? You've braced yourself, you're mentally there. Whatever's taken place to get you there has happened. But when that time comes, you wake up. You don't know if you're dead, alive, if it was a dream, if it was a nightmare. But then slowly, you begin to realize that you aren't dead, you are alive. But you are somehow forgotten. Somehow you were buried alive. Now this is something that would take place you know, way back in the past, way more than it does these days. And there is actually some really morbid security checks in place to try and prevent somebody from being buried alive. In modern times, some of these practices seem nothing shy of torture. But it could be hard to tell if somebody was dead. So they had to resort to these. Pain would often be inflicted on corpses. Now this could range from something simple like pinching or something extreme like inserting objects into the body to look for any kind of reaction for the body to move in response to the horrific pain that was being inflicted upon it. Now even in our times, in modern times, with all the medicine we have, with all the advancements, with all the technology, you would think that this never happens anymore. But sadly enough, it does. Take, for example, the recent case of Tamisha Beauchamp. Tamisha suffered from cerebral palsy since birth. Now, recently on a Sunday morning at Beauchamp's home, her family called 911. You know, they saw that she was having trouble breathing, there was a secretion around her mouth, and even her lips were pale. It wasn't looking good for Tamisha. Now, allegedly, Tamisha wasn't even breathing when the paramedics arrived. And the paramedics performed CPR and other life-saving techniques for like 30 minutes. They did what they could to save Tamisha's life. Now, given what the medical readings were saying and the condition of Tamisha, it was determined after doing all they could that she didn't have any signs of life. Now, a local emergency department physician pronounced Tamisha dead based upon the information given by the paramedics over the phone. Now, since there wasn't any foul play in this, the Southland Police Department notified the Oakland County Medical Examiner's Office of the findings and an on-site pathologist released the body of Tamisha to her family so that they could make plans for the funeral home and make arrangements. So all of this takes place and the paramedics have her in a body bag and they leave her in that body bag at the home around 9 a.m. and the family's basically just waiting on the funeral people to arrive, the funeral home people to arrive and pick Tamisha up. Now workers from the mortuary arrived to the house around like 1125 to pick Tamisha up. Now once they got her to the funeral home, literally by like 1145, Tamisha's family received a frantic phone call from the funeral home. The phone call was to let them know that Tamisha wasn't dead. The worker told the family that they discovered this when she went into the room and she was gonna prepare Tamisha for embalming. And when she unzipped the body bag, Tamisha was staring up at her. Now here's the clincher. Her godmother, who was a registered nurse who was at the house, had told the paramedics, had told everyone, I don't think she's dead. She told them that she thought she saw Beauchamp move and she detected a faint pulse but that was ignored. They told her that the movements were involuntary and that they were actually a reaction to drugs that the paramedics gave Tamisha while trying to save her life. Regardless of what the godmother said, they still felt like Tamisha had passed. Now clearly when all this came to light, she was rushed to the hospital and she has been at the hospital since then in intensive care and critical condition. One of the effects that took place from all of this is that she was left without her oxygen for like four hours. She suffered severe hypoxic brain damage and she's been hospitalized ever since. Now let's travel back to 1937. Let's go to France and look at a case. Angelo Hayes went out for a motorcycle ride and this would literally change his life in ways that many of us and certainly not him could have ever imagined. Angelo ended up wrecking that day while he was out on the motorbike. He wrecked into a brick wall head first. When help arrived there was no signs of life with him. Now it was said that his injuries were so horrible his head so mangled that even his parents weren't allowed to look at him. He was declared dead and eventually buried within three days. Now, the only thing is, is that his insurance company was doing an investigation. And so only two days after he was buried, not even really, they exhumed his body 
and thank God they did. What they found stunned them and the area, but it also saved Angelo's life. He was still alive. His body was still warm. His body had actually gone into a deep, deep coma and therefore required very little oxygen. Shockingly, unlike the unfortunate case of Tamisha, he would go on to make a full recovery, both body, mind, and spirit. And actually, this event would cause him to create a change that he wanted to see. He created a security coffin that was basically designed for situations like this. If you were to wake up in a coffin after you've been buried and pronounced dead. It had things like a little refrigerator, a little oven thing in it, a hi-fi cassette player. You name it, this was like the Cadillac of coffins for the recently deceased. For me, I don't know if I would want all that stuff. I mean, I'm down with having a little bell buried and I can ring or whatever, but I don't know if I would want to prolong the misery or just sit there and, you know, die again quicker than having you know, a little oven and a refrigerator with me, but that's just me. Now let's come back up a little bit closer to our times to 2007. While in Afghanistan, there's a British soldier who was caught in a roadside bomb. As you can imagine what happens with these type bombings, it was not pretty and the medics weren't unable to save him. So they thought. Again, like these other ones, he was pronounced dead. However, when his body was being washed before they put it into a body bag, the medical team watching him prepping the body noticed a faint heartbeat. He was still alive. He too was just in a deep coma. Now he was rushed back to the hospital and eight days later he came to. Now it was only at that point did he ever even realize what took place. And unfortunately, one of the aspects is that he no longer had any legs. And the second part is that he learned that he had almost been buried alive. He too would use this event to continue to soar in life. He would go on to represent Britain in 2012 in the Paralympics in the discus event. But not all of these situations end with the person surviving. There are some that actually, unfortunately, sadly, meet a fate worse than death, being buried alive and not surviving that. Let's look at the tragic case of Mary Best. Now this goes back in time to 1817. Mary Best was diagnosed with cholera and this was over in India. Now she already had a rough life. She was adopted, but then she too was abandoned by her adoptive mother and essentially just left to be cared for by the family doctor. Now after a long and drawn out painful death, you know, they buried her at the adoptive family's vault. Now, because of India's like tropical heat and the nature of this disease at this time, bodies were quickly buried. They didn't want this infection spreading. They wanted nothing to do with it. So very quickly, you know, bodies would be put where they were going. Now, nothing about her passing other than it being sad and tragic, you know, stuck out to anybody. I mean, it was pretty much on brand for what happens with somebody when they get cholera. So, you know, nothing made them pause or do anything different about this until 10 years later passed. Her uncle through adoption passed away and the caretaker and an assistant had to go back into the vault to prepare it for his burial. What they saw next would horrify them. Mary's coffin had originally been secured shut, but now it wasn't that way anymore. The lid had clearly been like, you know, pushed off or broken off and it was pushed off to the side. Now what remained of Mary, which was basically just her skeleton and tattered burial clothing, it told a story of a death that people wouldn't wish on their worst enemy. Her skeleton was halfway out of the coffin as if she had died while trying to climb her way out. Now her skull, which had no injuries when she was dead, had a huge fracture in it now. They said that it was as if she was banging her head over and over on something. Maybe when she came to and realized that she was buried, maybe being locked away in the coffin that long drove her mad. Regardless, she fractured her skull trying to save her life. Now her clothes were torn and tattered and her fingers were stuck in a clutched position. It was common for victims of cholera to go into deep coma just like we've heard with these other cases and it is presumed that this is what took place with mary that she wasn't actually dead that she was just in a deep coma and her body must have somehow some way healed itself enough for her to come back and realize i'm alive but i'm buried alive 
Now, of course, none of us really know when she came back to, how long she was alive trying to get out of that coffin, or if she ever even realized what happened to her. So regardless of time, place, condition, these things still happen. This fear of being buried alive is real. It is something that people have concerns about and should have concerns about. So whenever it's your time to come, make sure that your loved ones know for sure that it is really your time and not just some mistake medically made that will have you waking up in some dark, confined, claustrophobic space trying to claw and bang your way out to grab your last breath of fresh air. Now, if you want to hear more of my stories on things like this, click the videos that are coming up. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.